Many thanks for being there. And now to some health matters. Nigerian hospitals, including the renowned Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital, is shutting down wards as doctors and health workers relocate abroad due to poor working conditions and recruitment failures. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors confirmed the worsening shortage of medical professionals with the behavioral science psychiatry section at OAUTH being the latest casualty. NARD President Dr. Dili Abdullahi warned of the dire consequences, revealing that a one-for-one -one replacement policy is proposed to address the acute shortage with 900 doctors leaving the country between January and July 2023 alone. He emphasized the urgency for government's intervention to avert further deterioration as the healthcare crisis deepens, with hospitals grappling to provide adequate care. To discuss this further, we are being joined by Dr. Olushino Ajidawo, resident doctor, internal medicine. Uh, Dr. Ajidawo, thank you so much for joining us at this time. You're welcome. Yeah, good afternoon. So the general reason for uh, medical practitioners leaving uh, Nigeria and the um, hospitals where they work has to do with um, the need for better working conditions, uh, better um, welfareism, and of course, uh, better standard of living and better opportunities. But then looking at the peculiarities with Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital, what are the reasons that contributed to the mass exodus of these doctors and health workers? All right, thank you very much for that question. And now just to mention first in context, is it is not only doctors that are leaving the country in mass. It's healthcare workers, so from nurses, medical lab scientists, pharmacists, and all of that. Now, now let's use OEU for context. Um, if you've, you've been in the news that OEU was owing um, some doctors um, some months of salaries. Now, imagine coming to work every month and you've not been paid salaries. You understand? And these are doctors that are not fit because they are they are mental, psychological, physical, everything is being messed with because these are people that have families and how do you expect them to cater the, for their families in spite of the economy? You understand? So, I mean, that played um, a role. Now, another thing to also look at is, well, you know that um, if you go to an average government hospital in Nigeria, the working conditions, as you said also, they are, they are unfair working conditions. Now, you have the doctor to patient ratio are is so immense that you even have sometimes you see a doctor seeing a patient and the doctor is practically sleeping because they are being overworked. Talk about working hours, the call hours are very unfavorable because you don't have enough doctors. People have to, you know, overwork and do extra, extra shift. Now, we've had doctors that even died while on duty. Apart from that, again, the, 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 the salaries, the salaries compared to what is being um, obtained in other parts of the world is not comparable. For example, an average doctor in Nigeria, let's say a resident doctor, earns less than $500. Now, how do you want to survive with all the work you are doing? You're earning less than $500 and you are practically working 28 days out of 30, 31 days in a month. And now you now have somewhere that is telling you, well, you're going to have better working conditions. You're going to be paid when, you're, um, you're, when you were meant to be paid. And another thing is even with this mega money that a lot of doctors are earning you are still owing them salaries many people that, that, that even left the country are still being owed many months of salaries apart from that the system also is very toxic you have people being you know um, psychologically oppressed by senior colleagues and all of that so i think and we don't really have rules to actually checkmate all of this so i think all of this um actually um, contributed to that and now going to greener pasture where all things that, I mean, people respect you, you are being paid, you are compensated. Even when you say you want to do extra shifts, you get more money, who would see that and not jump at it? So I think um, that must have contributed to it. So how is that affecting um, or impacting um, the delivery of healthcare system um, in that particular locality where the hospital is located? Because we just saw footages of uh, people who are trying to um, access healthcare um, uh, from the medical practitioners that are on ground. And we also saw a couple of people that are being transported in um, a tricycle. Now, we see a situation like that as quite deplorable. Do you guys do referrals to other hospitals, most especially for cases whereby there are no doctors to treat them. What is the situation? Okay. Now, the situation is what's going to happen. 
because you don't have enough doctors, you have a lot of patients that are not able to access care. This is going to be the bother from emergencies, life-threatening conditions. Now, when these people get to, uh, and you know, an average Nigerian sees the government hospital and, oh, it's cheap, so let me go there. Now, when they get there, of, obviously, because there are no services, they'll be referred. Now, the, the funny thing is, where you are referring them to, it, the likelihood that there are not going to be doctors there is very, very high because they also have it, this whole exodus. It's not just in OAU; it's in a lot of um, it's in a lot of like government hospitals all over the country. I just think OAU zone is just the beginning point, and I think most more hospitals in Nigeria are still going to shut down with the way things are actually going because it's getting worse and more people are going to leave. Now, what happens then is when you get to another hospital, you don't have a specialist who has also left the country. So what is going to happen at the end of the day, you're going to have people dying. People are not able to assess care. Now, if you've been in the news, a lot of people have stopped taking medication because they're not able to see doctors. So what do they do? They go to all these local herbalists and all of that. They use dangerous drugs, which damages their organs. And then we have more mortalities and morbidities because you don't have doctors on ground to attend to people. So it's like a ricochet effect eventually. So I'm just wondering, is this something that um, happens just within government hospitals or the cuts across both government and uh, private um, medical institutions? Because we've not really heard of um, private um, uh, uh, hospitals also going through this particular situation. But, uh, of course, you talked about uh, remuneration, uh, you talked about um, living conditions, working conditions, most especially for these doctors, and there's also the issue of um, recruitment failures. So does it cut across the spectrum of um, the, the medical field in Nigeria? Okay, so it cuts across every medical field. Why you are just having um, the um, government hospitals being the one that is being voiced out um, on the media, because in, in a huge working force are res the resident doctors. And you know, if you're going to do residency training, most of the residency training centers are government hospitals. So that is why we're having a lot of the voicing, you know, coming from there. But it actually cuts across um, the every sector. But because a majority of the workforce, which are resident doctors in Nigeria and specialists, you will find them in the government hospitals. That is why that um, that is why this has really been a, a major concern because you don't really have a lot of resident doctors in private practice. If you're going to do residency training, majority of that has to be done in the government hospital. So that's why it is really, and again, um, the government hospitals are saying, as you know, because of um, this cheaper, how many people can afford private hospitals? For example, maybe a consultation in a government hospital is 2,000 naira. A government hospital, uh, sorry, a private hospital maybe says like 10,000. How many people can afford that? So majority of people visit, if you come to an, a clinic day, you will see that majority of people visit government hospitals because it is more affordable, it is cheaper. And that is why it's in, in, it's in the news compared to the um, private. But yes, the private um, owned facilities too have also been heavily hit by that. Well, we actually hope that something will be done to actually um, stem the tide of um, those who actually live in the country, most especially these medical practitioners. Uh, of course, we know that is something they need to do, but then um, that shortage affects uh, Nigeria's healthcare system. Thank you so much, Dr. Lushino uh, Ajidang, for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you.